Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this video is part of a series of videos I have here on YouTube on creating text inside of Photoshop. Be sure to look at the description for links to the rest of the videos. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the new video. In this Photoshop text project, we're going to do something a little bit fun here, do some starry kind of science fiction-y kind of text in here using some very straightforward techniques, but it gives kind of an interesting look, interesting outcome on this thing. Now this is going to be using just a couple of pictures. I have one right here. Just a lot of real bright stars, and then one here is for our background. Now both of these I found on, the, these are both Hubble pictures, and you can find the link in the description. So just a couple of fast pictures, nothing much to that, and then some text. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is done. We'll start off with a new file here. I have it set at the default Photoshop size and I'll set it for printing resolution at 300. Choose OK. There we go. First thing we need to do is to give us a couple of backgrounds to work with in here. The first one I want to have is just a straight black, so I'm going to make a new layer and let's set our colors to their defaults and just fill it with black and then let's make another layer here on the secondary layer I'm going to take my basic background star picture now it comes in pretty small there we go just get rid of that doesn't matter I'm just going to now expand this to fit the screen edit transform scale and I'll just drag it out until it gets out to the edges there we go. Don't worry about this kind of pixelation. That will go away as soon as I click on this checkbox. And there it goes. That's just our background. I'm going to hide that temporarily. And we can now put in some text on this. So let's go to our type tool. And I'll set the texture just to a bright red. It doesn't matter what color you use. This is just so we can see it. We're going to be using this as a clipping mask, so it's not going to matter what what the text is. Click in here and then I'll just type in stars. Now I'm using a typeface called show card gothic. It's right there at the top. It's a real big fat bold typeface. Any typeface with a lot of black to it will work out just fine. It just gives you some place to put your image inside of. Let's now position this and resize this to fit the screen. So edit transform scale again. I'll hold the shift key down so that this thing will scale proportionally and then I'll drag the corners out until I get a good nice large size just like that. There we go. So, and apply that. There's our our text. Now let's put our star field into the letters. Real easy to do. We'll go back here grab our star field image. There it is. I'll just float that out like that. Drag it on top there's the star field and let me just bring it just to the edge of that one letter let's make a copy of this pull it down to the new layer button make a copy drag that over and I can now select both of these hold the shift key or control key down right click and merge layers and those kind of position them like that I need to get rid of this seam in the middle and that's easy to do using the clone stamp tool. So clone stamp tool. Now it's pretty small so I'm going to bring my size up here. Looks like about 200 or so on this. That's pretty good. It's 199. Good enough. Just a few fast clone stamps. I'll, I'll click out here somewhere and then clone stamp in there to hide that. I'll click clone stamp right there. I'll click a little clone stamp in here. This is just to again to hide that seam. This doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be coming in and clipping this into the letters. Okay, so that gives us our star field for going inside of our lettering. Let's now make a clipping path on this. So we have the text underneath, our star field on top. The star field is selected and we'll go up to layer come down here to create clipping mask there we go and that just clips it inside now I can move that around until I get 
just the right look. So you kind of play with it until you get a nice, a nice look. Notice if you go too far, you get to see the, the actual lettering in there. You know, it looks like that's pretty good. I have some nice bright stars in a few of these. So that's good. Uh, that takes care of these stars in the lettering. We now want to help these stand out from the background just a little bit. And we'll do that with some layer effects, either the FX down here at the bottom, or so you can see what I'm doing, layer and layer style right there. I'm going to do two things in here. I'm going to be doing a stroke and an outer glow. Let's start with our stroke. And I'm just going to set this, just leave it the stroke on size 3 at black. We'll leave that as is. We'll adjust that in just a second. Come down to outer glow and in here let's change this color over to kind of a a nice bluish tone in here. It's still very very light but a bluish tone might be nice. You can use you know, any, any tone you want actually for this. It's really up to you. And you may want to come back in and play around with this a little bit once you know what the nebula looks like in behind you may want to play around with your glow a little bit i'll just do kind of a bluish kind of light blue glow here now to see this thing we need to increase the size there we go and increase the spread a little bit and just kind of play around with it until it gets kind of a nice glow-ish effect the amount that you leave on is up to you. You can use more or less. If you want to tone that down, just bring the opacity down. But we just want to have it so we can kind of see the edges of the stars a little bit. We're going to be using that nebula behind mostly to bring our stars out. But this just helps define that edge. Okay, now we have that. Let's go back to our stroke. Increase the stroke size a little bit. Again, just making that edge a little bit easier to discern. So I set this at 10 pixels for my image, and that's what we're looking at right now. All right, so far so good. Let's take a look at our stars in the background. There's the stars in the background. That's looking fine. Now I want to put the nebulosity in here. This is kind of a fun little trick. We'll do some fancy brush stuff on this and a few other little tricks on this nebulosity. Let's set our colors over here. I want kind of a dark blue for the foreground and then kind of a light blue for the background. Something like that. You know, nothing exact. Just a couple of, of nice colors. Let's come down to this star layer, put a new layer above this. We actually have one sitting right down there, so let's drag that up. So you want a clean layer above your stars. And then let's go back up here to our brush tool. And looking at our brushes, now I've, I've reset these brushes to their default settings. This is just the standard default setting in here. I'll scroll down. If you don't see the images like this, that's because I have mine set for a large thumbnail. Yours may be set on a different setting. So if you want to match what I'm seeing, just set your brushes at large thumbnail. And that's that little gear icon right there. Okay, using the wheel on my mouse, I'm just going to roll down a little bit. And there we go, kind of this nebulosity thing. It's 45 pixels across, kind of a nebulous little bit in here. Let's just see what this thing says. Let's put this to large list. And we'll scroll down and see what the name of this one actually is. Per stroke brightness variance. That's kind of a fancy name, but there you go. That's what that one is, per stroke brightness variance and I'll go back to my large thumbnails looks good now I want to have this much larger you can see the brush size there I want it to be a lot larger so I'll put my brushes way up my size way up here looks like something around in there you know five six hundred in there someplace is fine I'll we'll just type in 650 that looks pretty good again the actual size will vary depending upon the size of your picture okay let's just minimize that down so we have our brush have our colors now if I paint in here that's what we get you kind of this this nebulous kind of a thing I'm going to just do the control alt z key 
couple times and back out of that. Now I want to have it give me some more variation on this. It's a bit more random. And we can do that by bringing up the brush palette right here. There's lots of stuff in here. We have shape dynamics, color dynamics, transfer, smoothing. I'm going to be using all of those. Click on shape dynamics and size jitter. If I bring this up, it's going to give me larger and smaller brushes as I paint. It's going to adjust that minimum diameter. I'll leave that alone. Angle jitter. Let me bring that up. It's going to rotate them around as it is and roundness jitter as well. All of these things are going to give me some variation on this. Now watch if I paint this. I'm just kind of tap in here. So it's how the brush size is changing. Each time it's spinning a little bit and it's changing around. That's what that does for me, the shape dynamics. It, it gives me variation on the brush. Okay, hold the Alt, Alt and Control key and I'll just tap backwards in here. Okay, color dynamics. This allows us to switch between the foreground and the background color. I'm going to put this at about halfway up, about 50%. And hue jitter about 50% as well. That's going to give me some coloration adjustments. Now watch as I tap in here, I get color shifts as well. The amount of color shift is controlled by the hue jitter. If you want to have less color shift, bring that back a little bit. Foreground and background is going to be jumping back and forth between those. I'm going to hold down the Control Alt Z key and this just back up a few of those steps. We're getting there. Saturation jitter, you can adjust that as well. Give that a little bit more adjustment. You can do an opacity jitter in here, so you have some opacity adjustment as well. Flow jitter also will give you a little more variation, especially if you're using a pen. And then smoothing will just help smooth things out. Okay, so we have our setting shape dynamics. Size jitter is at 96, but anywhere towards the higher end. Minimum dynamiter, pretty slow, or pretty small down here. Angle jitter, I have about halfway. Roundness jitter, about halfway. Minimum roundness, about a third of the way, quarter, third of the way up. You don't need to be exact on that. Color dynamics, about halfway through. Hue jitter up just a little bit. Saturation jitter, about halfway. Brightness, about halfway, and so forth. So it's kind of you know, about halfway up on those. Transfer, about halfway. And smoothing is selected. Okay, let's just close that out. Now, as I come in here and just kind of begin to tap in a little bit, like this, I can begin to get this interesting kind of a nebulosity look. Now we're going to come back and tweak this a little bit. That gives us our basic nebulosity. I bring back in the stars, you can see there it is sitting on top of the stars. I was just tapping each time there, so it didn't, doesn't come in real, real solid. We also had that opacity variance happening, so that we gave, got a bit of an opacity adjustment variation there. Let's take it a bit further now. We're getting pretty close, but a little bit further. Let's go up here to the filters and the filter gallery. And let me just get rid of some stuff there. Okay, we want the artistic filters. The first one you want is the fresco. If I just click on this little minus key, back out a little bit. And if I show and hide this, you'll see how this gives us kind of an interesting effect. Some dark and some white spots. And then I want plastic wrap, which also gives us an interesting effect in here. So we're going to be using those two, plastic wrap and fresco. Now I can use two filters in here if you want to in the filter gallery. Just click on this little icon there, little new icon. Here's our plastic wrap. I'm going to change this bottom one over to Fresco. You can change the effect in here by dragging one above the other. You get a little, little different effect. I want to have Fresco on the bottom, plastic wrap on the top. You can also adjust your brush size in here and have some slight changing on that. That's the fresco. Let's click the plastic wrap. And I'll take a look at the smoothness and just kind of seeing what we have in here. Just giving us, you know, these interesting kind of hard edges in there. 
There's more detail, there's less detail. I think more detail is fine. Choose OK. And again, that puts in some variation on that. Just interesting variation. Now, I don't want to have those real strong edges showing, but I want that variation. So let's now go in and tone that back a little bit by blurring that out. So filter, come down to blur, and we'll use the Gaussian blur. There it is. So there's, there's no blur. And then I'll just bring it up a little bit until I just begin to get rid of those hard edges and they begin looking like wispy things instead. So now it has some wispy stuff happening in here instead of that hard edge. Okay. Now the last thing we have is that I want to have some of our stars show through this better. Like that one right there. I want to have that showing. So let's put a layer mask on this layer. Layer mask button which is right there. Or you could do layer and layer mask right there. Now on a layer mask white shows and black hides. So let's go to our brush, choose black, choose the brush here. I'm going to put this back to our default. Brush us to a real soft brush and bring the size down a bit. About 200, 250 in there somewhere. And then I'm going to be, be painting on the mask. Make sure that your white outline is around your mask layer. And then I can come in here and I can just paint on that mask. I can also come in and using this, I can put a little more variation into my nebula just by tapping in a few spots. Anything which I'm not really happy with, I can go ahead and do that. And then bring back in that nebula a little more. Just using the layer mask to hide some of that nebula. Like right, I want to have that, that star showing better. There we go, kind of showing through. Make sure that's nice and bright. Okay, there we go. That's how to just kind of interesting, spacey, sci-fi look on the stars. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Notice that we, we put in that glow, outer glow around the text, and it's pretty hard to see now. It just kind of blends in with that background. That's what I was, I was saying is that we're not really going to be seeing that, but it's going to help us define the edge of those letters. You can now come back in and tweak that if you want to. So let's just double click on outer glow bring that back up and then we can adjust the opacity on that until you have a nice easy to see edge on your stars you can adjust your size and so forth so now you can come back in and do your little bit of tweaking to make everything work nicely see now how this outer glow is just blending into that nebulosity that we created in behind so it doesn't really look like it's a specific outer glow. You also see now why I have that black edge in here, that stroke. It again just helps to define the edges. If I hid the stroke, see the, the text doesn't look quite as clean. And that stroke helps to really accentuate that text. Okay, there you go. Little tweaks and we're all set. Now, you know, if you want to do final little touches, you can come in here and you can you know, adjust your colors. You can go back onto this layer and do some more stuff. Whatever you want to you know, put in additional colors in here. But there we go. That is how to do this kind of fun little sci-fi star look. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.